We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kola Wale joins us this morning uh, on, on the, off the press, I beg your pardon, his uh, legal practitioner. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Mr. Metin. All right, then uh, let's start off with the punch. The punch says, suspension, are you heads for court as PDP appoints acting chair? That's boldly written on the punch newspaper. And away from that, you have uh, underneath... Are you once caught to overturn suspension? Dama gone to run party pending judgment. PDP record worst electoral outing under IU entitled chair uh, or embattled chair, I beg your pardon. Weak and gone for good. That's what the G5 governors are quoted to say. And still looking at the punch, court cases won't stop handover to Tunubu and Shatima. That's what the federal government is quoted to say, but it's more like stating the obvious. Now, stop fuel subsidy, uh, revive refineries. That's what Pengasin is telling the federal government. And just uh, as we're still looking at the punch, then labor shelves strike and gives the Central Bank of Nigeria fresh two-week ultimatum. Uh, again, you find federal government 22 billion loan requests rejected by the House of Representatives. I mean, it, I mean, it's very, very funny if you ask. Uh, so, so you had plans. The government is still planning to borrow, you know, just as they're going to be signing off and taking about 22 billion, you know, uh, billionaire loan, right? Or billion dollars. Ramadan, Yobe reduces working hours for civil servants so they are able to be part of the festivity and celebration. One die, seven injured as fire got Lagos market, the Balogun market. I mean, it seemed to be a real uh, occurring event every other time. Very, very saddening. The nation is what we have next. Uh, Buhari Tunubu well placed to perform as president. Then you find president leads torrents of... Uh, Torrents for president elect at 71. President elect, uh, I mean, to hold in Lagos. Uh, there's some quarters saying that that has been suspended. You know, president elect thinks he can't have that, you know, 71 birthday and all of the uh, ceremonies that come with it, but rather to have a national prayer. But, you know, the nation puts it differently. Labor shelves planned strike over naira scarcity for two weeks. NLC, TUC to monitor situation. Ngige, we are uh, broken, or we have broken the trance. That's what you find there. Pangasin converses petrol subsidy removal. Please appoint DIG and promote 24 to AIG. And then again, are you steps aside as PDP national chairman? Uh, that's the much we can take on the nation. We just move away from that and pay attention to the Guardian. The Guardian says subsidy removal, uh, subsidy removal plan raises anxiety as labor breaks rank. Subsidy removal plan raises anxiety as labor breaks rank. Now, labor not aware of palliative talks on subsidy. The government has said we're going to put out, you know, funds for transportation to cushion the effect, you know, and what have you. But labor is saying they're not in the new. Pengerson, okay, subsidy removal. NLC resists the deadline. You know, that's always been the case. Resistance from the people. People are worried about uh, the effectiveness of the, re the outcome. I mean, the whatever it is that we're going to benefit from it, how effective would it be managed? Don't impoverish the masses, a uh, group is telling the new government. Palliative committee yet to harmonize position one year after uh, Ngige incoming administration to propose pay increase and uh, bear the palliative burden. That's what you find. Now, still looking at it, then you find uh, labor suspense strike, CBN uh, picketeering, to monitor cash flow for two weeks. That might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. And Tunubu Council's 71st birthday uh, colloquium for national prayer, just like I'd mentioned. PDP obeys court order and replaces IU. Uh, that's it. We move away from that. And the last would be the Daily Trust newspaper. The Daily Trust says strike over cash crunch. Labor soft pedal to monitor our supply for two weeks. 
and then they can hit, right? So, uh, Ehedi Oha withdraws from Imo PDP Guba race. Oh, well, that's quite interesting. Oil drilling kicks off in Nasarawa federal government, I Sokoto and Bida Basin, among others. We are still talking about oil uh, when there were several reports saying that uh, we were still struggling. We didn't really have customers, the likes of Fr France and what have you were not available you know, to patronize us. And yet we're still discovering oil and we're very dependent on it when the world is moving away from the use of oil. Nigeria will earn more money with deregulated oil sector. That's what Pengasin is quoted to say. And then 24 die in Niger auto crash. Very unfortunate, saddening our hearts and prayers with those who have lost their loved ones. PDP replaces IU with uh, Dalgum as national chairman. And that's it this morning on our papers. Well, Tunde Kola Wale, you're here with us. Thank you once again for joining us. I'd like to share your thoughts on, uh, you know, I'd like to share your thoughts on the issue now, on the papers, and one that's been dominating all of the papers that we've taken this morning is the suspension of IU, as uh, IU now heads the court, uh, apparently. The PDP has decided, finally, after the G5 governors have been pressuring the system prior to the election for the removal of IU. Now, finally, IU is out. Yeah, uh, honestly, the IU that we know, or that we knew, especially during the struggle for return to democracy, and during the struggle for the revalidation or restoration of MP Adiola's uh, presidential victory, in 1993, was a principled man, a dogged man, he now had respect for the people's opinion. But somehow, the IU that we are seeing now appears to have made a, a 360 degree turnaround. That all the principles that he used to stand for, it appears he had, all he had negated all those principles. Uh, for example, I am of the opinion that IU should not have uh, taken up the responsibility of being the chairman of a PDP, knowing what the constitution of the PDP is, and knowing uh, the informal uh, agreement between the party members as regards the rotation of uh, or sharing of some of the offices in the party and the executive of government and rotating them between the South um, and the North. But somehow he took up those responsibilities and despite all the needs and cries and pressure, not just from the G5 governor, but from even the rank and file of members of the party, he stood put, he refused to step down from that position. And he has led his party to one of the worst electoral victories since they returned to civil in 1999. Ah, uh, it continues to beat my imagination. Take, for example, uh, England. The Prime Minister of uh, Britain, the lady who left before he, he, he sooner uh, got him now, uh, fell into problems simply because of a uh, budget presentation. Immediately she presented a budget that was considered not to be workable. The woman was asked to go. The party rank can file the senior members of the party said, look, you have to step aside for somebody else to take on this responsibility. It would appear that you are not ready for this challenge. And the woman resigned honorably. Somebody has also resigned in Scotland. Now they have now have a new a, a first minister. That is the way it is done in civilized society. Immediately your leadership is questioned. You step aside because of your integrity, because of uh, the interest of, uh, of the party as a whole. Not that you leave your party to a disaster electoral outing, and then again you start rushing to court to, 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 to challenge your removal. Well, it is his right to go to court because we don't want to encourage anybody to engage in heaven. But if I were you, I would have allowed the speaking dog to lie. He hasn't done well at all with regard to the management of his party and the responsibilities he took upon himself. Uh, it would appear to me that he took it. Uh, for service reasons, just to help his friend, uh, vice president or former vice president, uh, Atiku, secure the party ticket and also win the presidential election. 
That is not the way things are done. And you have been swimming against the current. Thank God the party members have had for it to remove it now, which I consider even coming too late. He also have been removed long ago. Yes. I mean, I like the fact that you have also brought it to the point where he should have been removed. Uh, so it's one, on the other hand, that he should have known better the, what the constitution of his party says and to, you know, reject the offer when it was being made. But however, the party also uh, was also in a position to say, hey, we'll take you off, especially when you had consent from uh, governors from certain parts, five of them uh, who were tagged as G5 governors, even though their actions have been described as very draconian, especially uh, looking at the fact that they pretty were working against the party at the time. But we, we would have to move away from, you know, the PDP and her crisis and just look at another issue, which is uh, on the front burner, dominating all of the pages of a national dailies. It talks about, you know, the labor, uh, the labor union and the fact that they have suspended their strike action uh, for another two weeks, monitoring the behavior of the Central Bank of Nigeria in terms of making cash available. How do you respond to this, Tunde Kolawali? Honestly, the labor shouldn't have uh, uh, stopped the strike, the proposed strike. Uh, why do I say so? Uh, you and I will know that the disastrous uh, redesigning of the Naira has destroyed the uh, small businesses. It has also led to people dying, burning of banks, and so many, I mean, so many adverse uh, consequences on the Nigerian economy that is going to be fast in the next 10, 15 years, except something drastic um, is done. So if uh, an institution or if an individual has led this country to that kind of uh, uh, a precipice, I would think that labor should have insisted on accountability. Uh, they should uh, be able to get the CBN governor to explain why he led the country on such a disastrous path, and also the presidency who approved the resigning of, um, of uh, the Naira. Of course, too, the Minister of Finance, all of them, both the Nigerian people and explanation. Uh, so even though there is an improvement in um, uh, cash liquidity economy now, but the next thing the labor should have insisted on is to insist on accountability. Who did what and for what reason, and what should be the punishment for that kind of uh, uh, action? So, pulling out from the side will not uh, allow us as Nigerians to get accountability with regards to what has happened. Uh, furthermore, you and I will know that uh, the country, with regards to inflation, and then the proposed removal of certain subsidy. It's also another thing that labor should uh, not have withdrawn uh, the strike action because the withdrawal of subsidy is going to be even more disastrous than the Naira redesigning. Like I've always emphasized, there's no society or there's no country in the world that does not subsidize one thing or the other. Take, for example, day-to-day -day living of the people. In some countries of the world, there are food banks. When you have lost your job, when you are unemployed, or you are a deficit and all that, there are certain places that are earmarked for you to go and uh, collect at least uh, two, three square meals uh, a day so that you don't die of hunger. A man will look in order to subsidy, railway system, metro system, agricultural system, no, but, uh, in uh, most parts of the world, are just... also subsidized. Uh, I mean, Kola Wale, so we don't, I mean, we're yeah. going to get to the point where we talk about the issue of All subsidy. Right. But right. uh, let's still stay with, you know, the CBN and the fact that you have the strike being suspended, monitoring uh, the yeah. availability of this cash for the next, you know, two weeks. Uh, do you think that yeah. so far from your assessment, uh, the cash has been very available uh, since the directive was given? And do you also see cash being available for the next two weeks? I mean, ease of accessing this cash also uh, something that we can, uh, you know, say is a plus? Well, there is still crowd in some of the banks eh, when you go there or when you are passing by them. But at least I went to my own bank 
And where they used to give me 2,000 naira, 5,000 naira uh, this week, they were able to make 20,000 naira available to me. And I also noticed that the big crowd that I used to see in front of my own bank branch uh, isn't as a mammoth as uh, it used to be. So if these are indicators, it would appear to me there is uh, some slight improvement in the cash liquidity uh, that we have in the system or in the economy uh, now. Uh, what is going to determine uh, what will they might be seeing uh, with regard to this uh, cash liquidity is whether the CBN has bumped the old Naira that they withdrew from the system or they are still keeping them in their fault. If the money is in their fault and they have not printed the newly redesigned Naira, all they needed to do is to inject the old Naira notes into, into the system. And then we'll see a tremendous improvement in the cash liquidity in the system. But if they have gone to the old Naira notes and all, and they don't have the means or the resources to print new ones, either locally or abroad, then we might not uh, be seeing any substantial improvement in the cash liquidity in the Nigerian economy. Yeah, so, um, well, uh, the punch, looking at the punch, there's also that headline where you were trying to delve into. It talks about Pengasin and her support for the federal government removing subsidy, asking that, hey, uh, stop subsidy, and then, of course, ensure that uh, our refineries are revived. Are, 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 we, are we not tired of this same, you know, uh, line of thoughts over time? stop subsidy, revive, you know, the refineries. Tunde Kolawali. Well, mm, Lady Mercy, let me say, I am personally tired of this perennial debate on the fuel subsidy. Uh, like I always say, the excuses that the Nigerian mm -hmm. like uh, always make for their poor performance, for their disastrous management, of the Nigerian society, the Nigerian country, the Nigerian economy, is uh, the subsidy that they have had to be paying the on petroleum product. So I want to say, let them remove the subsidy. Even though I do know, it is not necessary to remove the subsidy. Even though I do know, the amount of subsidy that they are talking about is not what they are even paying to the so-called uh, importers. But if the removal of subsidy who will help us to get to the bottom of either the non-performance or the performance of the Nigerian ruling airline, then so be it, so that we will not have these excuses again. And then we will be able to hold the Nigerian political elite accountable for the poor performance that we have seen in governance uh, over the day since Nigeria's uh, independence. Because nobody has held their hand from uh, repairing and fixing all the refineries uh, and making sure that those refineries function so that we don't have to import the fuel uh, from abroad. So in a way, the Nigerian people are going to be punished for the non-performance of the Nigerian political elite through the removal of the fuel uh, subsidy. And remember, uh, uh, Matthew, just about a year ago or last year, a jumbo contract was uh, signed for the fixing of all the refineries. And we are told, I mean, a substantial amount has been paid for that turnaround maintenance. And we are also told that it's going to take about five years to fix the refineries. I have made inquiries for some petroleum engineers, and I'm told that the refinery can be fixed within a six weeks, I mean, six months. But the Nigerian allies are telling us it will take them five years to fix the refineries. Even when engineers are saying it could be done Even within uh, six months. And furthermore, we have asked the qu question, why is the outgoing government awarding the contract for the fixing of the refinery that is not going to be completed in the next five years? Why don't they leave it for the incoming government to do? The answer is in the air between you and I. So for me, I don't believe they are paying as much subsidy as they claim to pay. Secondly, subsidy has always been the excuse for their poor performance in governance. 
Thirdly, there is no country in the world that does not give one form of subsidy or the other. Take a country like Saudi Arabia, housing, uh, petroleum products, all those things are subsidized. When Libya was still Libya, all those things are subsidized. So if God has given us the petroleum products, why can't we utilize it for the benefit of our people? And as far as you and I know, that in the next few years, petroleum uh, products will be like a coal, obsolete energy that nobody wants to deal with because the world is already looking towards clean energy, solar energy, ocean wave energy, uh, wind uh, mills, um, and nuclear uh, power supplies, and, uh, and what are they? Electric cars and what are they? So if that is the case, why are the Nigerian allies still hammering on this petroleum uh, uh, product or crude oil that is already in my own globe, you know, obsolete energy in many parts of the world? So uh, the ways of the Nigerian allies uh, is very difficult to, 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 to predict. But the bottom line is that uh, they have always performed woefully in government and they have always made the subsidy that they have had to pay the excuse for their poor performance. But if you look around to all the government institutions, factories and industries that have been privatized, which one of them is working optimally? And since they privatize also most of those organizations, most of those organizations are either dead now or come at us. And again, we have a different example. In China, the commanding height of the Chinese economy is manned by the government, and they are competing effectively with the capitalist America, with the capitalist Europe. So that but tells that us that uh, it is not the subsidy that you pay or the privatization of everything in your country or in your society that will make a difference or that will give room for good management of those industries and uh, institutions. What, what so, but like we said, mm. the labor, the civil society, the market women, the transport union and all that should be ready to stand up to the Nigerian elite after they have removed the subsidy to sit up and perform like their counterparts in the other parts of the world. Uh, let's quickly look at, you know, the issue of the pilot for, I mean, subsidy removal. However, uh, it's, it's no longer an argument or a conversation uh, that no there's need to exit subsidy, even though it has always uh, embraced several, uh, you know, sub of opposition. It's been opposed. The idea of removing subsidy over time has not sat well with some quarters. But yes, but um, because it's very, uh, you know, it has a significant impact in terms of on our resources. It's, it's expensive. Now, uh, there's also a plan. Government is saying we're going to make transportation available uh, just to cushion the effect. Even though Labour, on the other hand, is saying they're not in the know of the palliative for uh, subsidy remover. But I ask you, what's the rationale behind that? Uh, 5,000 naira for transportation and uh, the fact that we're also trying to reduce cost of the subsidy, then we're going to be paying cash. Uh, what's the rationale, really? What's the rationale, really? All the time they are talking about palliative, has it ever worked? You remember when Naganga was Minister of Finance? And they were toying with this removal of the subsidy and what have you. People like Aganga and the other minister came up and said that they have imported all sorts of uh, buses to do mass transit for people and subsidize the rate on all the Nigerian roads. And that those buses are already at the port, waiting to be discharged. Have we seen any buses from those agrees up to today? The answer is no. Now, we embarked on what we call the school feeding program. That's a palliative to kind of subsidize the, uh, the parents with regard to feeding of their children. As it was effectively, look at the epileptic performance of the PRT and all the mass transit in Lagos in here. As it was effectively, even the Nigerian Labor Congress used to have a transport company. As that transport company not collapsed, also look at all the noise that we are making about mass passing through the Nigerian railway. As it was through the rail, as it was. So, 
also look at the uh, trader money. Um, mm. uh, the money they give to the young people, just ordinary 30,000 naira that they give to the young people, which uh, is the uh, pioneer award. Has it worked? So the truth of the matter is that uh, some cities in this part of the world has always mad with corruption. And where it is not mad with corruption, it doesn't really go to the people who actually should get them. Most times, the politicians will give it to their cronies and party supporters and those who voted for them. And the poor people, the ordinary people, no, who no, are no, the receiving so, uh, end of the wale, economic management, wale, profit, my, do not profit from it. Kola Wale, my concern here is this. If we say wale, that we're trying to cut costs, because funding subsidy is expensive. Then, on the other hand, we're making provision to cater for 40 million Nigerians by giving them transportation, you know, allowance or piloting, however you call it. Are we really cutting cost? We are saying the same thing. Where will the money even come from? As of today, the economy with due respect, the Nigerian nation with due respect can be said, to be economically bankrupt. Uh, former Emir of uh, Kano, uh, Lamido Tanusi, was in the media about two or three days ago, and he said that debt servicing in Nigeria today is 108 percent. This is the money that the country is earning either internally or from <laughs> abroad. So if you are already using 108 percent of your income or non-income to service a subsidy, I mean to service debt, where will you get money? to give as palliative to the ordinary people to the 40,000 Nigerian that we say you want to give it to. 40 million, please. And if you say just 40 million, if you say 40 million, mm -hmm. where will the money come from? And even if you have the money, the palliative that we have uh, uh, pretended to give in the past, mm -hmm. has it ever worked like I said? They will just give it to either their supporters mm -hmm. or to their political, or to their members of the political party. Mm -hmm. And then once they have done that for one or two months or three months, or six months at most, the program will collapse. And then it will be mad in corruption. And then we will back to square one. It's uh, when they talk about palliative, we don't have um, a regime of uh, an excellent management of, uh, palli of giving palliative to people in this part of the world. The structures are not there. And where the structures are even there, the political class and the, program and the civil servants have a way of transparency into the wheels of it. Kola Wale, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, so I, I think that we have been disconnected. Right, so uh, fortunately, uh, we couldn't hear his thoughts to the latter. As regards the removal of subsidy, the fact that the government is saying we will you know, make plans to cushion the effect and not to entire 200 million persons, but to a group of persons, let's say 40 million of them, 5,000 naira. We don't know if it's going to be on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. We're talking about transportation. But if you look at it, yes, it's expected that there should be a provision in place. So if you say you want to embark on XYZ policy, then you should have put in place some measures. Uh, that's why a lot of persons would say that uh, yes, you have, uh, there would have been need for the refineries to be functional. It would, you know, take away all of the stress and the burden. But uh, how far can we fare with 5,000 Arab palliative for 40 million Nigerians? And are we really going to have that? Is that also not incurring a cost? Because we're seeing we're trying to reduce cost. But on the other hand, we're also incurring cost. Just as much as it's important to make provision for you know, the effect of uh, the subsidy removal. But this conversation has been you know, ongoing for a very long time. Now, there are several concerns as to the management of the process because we say we will save a lot of funds. We would save a lot from what we would uh, you know, we usually spend on subsidy if we remove it eventually. But uh, we also still have a lot of persons who think that we don't have the people, the right leadership to manage and be transparent with the removal of subsidy. That's also another conversation for another day. But I was hoping that we had Tunde Kolawale so we could take one or two, but that's not the case. Okay, so Tunde, uh, 
Thank you once again yeah, for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again for... Uh, let's, let's leave the issue of the subsidy now and uh, the let's, removal. Let's it's important that the government makes provision, you know, to cushion the effects, but does it really have to be, you know, spending money? What if we had, you know, all the basic things working for the people so they don't get to feel the, you know, impact of this? But we'll leave it at that now. Uh, how would you uh, how would you respond to this? The federal government had you know made a request for 22 billion naira loan, which was rejected by House of uh, Representative. Why is it that you know the government is very bent on borrowing you know to the latter? It's like borrowing onto you. You just you're dying and then you're still borrowing. You're dying and then you're still borrowing. Thank God that the National Assembly. The House of Representatives in particular is waking up to its responsibility of containing this extra budgetary expenditure, especially in the dying minutes of the present day administration. If the National Assembly has been allowed with its responsibility, the mountain of debt that Nigeria has on its neck will not have been there. But uh, they turn a blind eye. A very, very serious uh, a money or a cancer that is going to be a serious problem for the incoming uh, administration. Well, my suspicion is that uh, this government wants to start uh, or wants to continue to rep uh, the pedal until the last minute that they leave office. You and I will know that they are still insisting on uh, going on with the census, uh, which we are told is likely to begin uh, even this month. Money is likely to be required to conduct the defense of. Of course, if they still want to print the newly redesigned the Naira, they will require money to do that. Furthermore, civil servant salaries, uh, the army are also on the battlefield. Money will be required to do some of these things. But the question you would ask yourself, must we always borrow to fund uh, our ordinary, uh, uh, the living area of the people of uh, Nigeria, in the countries that I know that are serious minded, what they do is that when they have capital projects, railway, construction, schools, hospitals, underground uh, cables, and what have you, they borrow money to do capital projects. They will also have the capacity to generate uh, revenue. So we pay back the loan. You don't start borrowing money to pay salaries or to feed the soldiers on the battlefield or to fund the census. Census is not a do or die affair. If you don't have the money to, to fund census now, you could wait until the next government comes into power. If they are able to raise the money, they will do it. But this government is insisting on going ahead with uh, all the programs that it has set for itself. Uh, a kind of policy of raising the better until the very last minute that they leave power. And I think that is not futuristic. By now, they should be winding down, not just on programs and projects, but also on borrowing. In fact, they should be I mean, uh, conserving money for the incoming administration so that the administration will be able to take off uh, without the itches. But if the administration that is coming in, you start with the mountains of debt and all that, then you will be you will be creating crisis for the incoming government, which I think is not a too good uh, at all. Like I said, they continue to insist on continuing with their programs and policies, which are money consuming, but which, in my humble opinion, they could have uh, stood down until the next government comes into power in another one month or two. Well, so, but uh, just a bit of a correction to, you know, what yeah. you have said. It's, it's not that, yeah. you know, the House of Reps it's, actually it's rejected, that, you, know, you know, the request. As a matter of fact, they had approved it. But, you know, the, <laughs> the bank where they were going to borrow had rejected it, which is the China Development Bank. They rejected that okay. request for some reason. Yeah, I didn't quite get uh, I think quite the audio was uh, poor. No, 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 that's that's okay. Uh, but but it's also yeah. important, you know, to note that you know the China Development yeah. Bank uh, rejected well, that request. The Chinese too may have rejected it uh, 
believing that such uh, the other kind of a law is better handled by the incoming administration. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Tunde Kolawale, I think I'm being prompted to, you know, call it a wrap at this point. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We look Thanks forward for to sharing me. your thoughts as all, always. Do have a lovely day. All right, then uh, Tunde Kolawale is a legal My practitioner. My to your colleagues in the studio. He right. definitely get to hear that. Thank you so much. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, like I mentioned, is a legal practitioner. He's right here with us in Lagos, and he joined us via Zoom. Uh, once again, we appreciate you. We take a break. When we return, we come up with a first conversation. We ask that you stay with us. Good morning.